Hey everybody, we're gonna finally get our compiler uh, running words that we compile in this in this video. So let's just jump right in. We're just gonna make a couple kind of minor tweaks. It was the, this is the most, uh, kind of the simplest way I could figure out how to do this without making a whole bunch of crazy changes. So um, I think it'll, I think it works. It may not be the absolute best way to do it, but um, you know, programming, it's more of an art than a science, I think. And, a lot of times anyway. So, all right. Uh, so we are going to change our run word function to return a Boolean instead of not returning anything at all. And then in our run word function, we're going to uh, basically set up to process input again. So we're gonna run the, our process input function again. So it's basically gonna be running within itself. Uh, and I'll, we'll get into exactly how that all works here in just a second. So let input array equal definition dot components separated by. So we're just taking our, our definition, right? And uh, which is gonna be our word, it would be like this, the 10, 10, 2, 20, or the high BB plus, um, that's our definition. And then we're just gonna separate that into an array. So it would be like high comma B comma B comma plus, you know, and those are gonna be in an array. Um, and that's the same thing we're doing if we go back to the top here. It's the same thing we're doing in this while statement here right before we process the input, run our process input function. Um, there it is. So same thing. Um, we're just doing it again because we're doing it instead of taking input from the console, we're taking input from that compiled string, basically. Um, so once again, if process input so we're running that process input function input array we're going to pass in our input array and then we're good here's where um kind of we make it so that we can recycle this process input function so we're going to add a another argument called compiled and we're going to pass it pass the value of true in when we run it from our run word function uh, if it runs successfully we're going to print Okay, else we are going to uh, print error processing compiled word. And then we're gonna return false. Um, and here we will return, actually I think we need to return true. Let's just return true out here after that if statement runs completely, um, whether it returns false you know, or not. Yeah, because if it returns false, it'll break the function before. So I think that's a good place for it. Um, so now we, we need to go up and adjust our function declaration so that we can, so that it uh, process input takes this compiled uh, Boolean. So here's process input. We're just gonna put a comma here, compiled, and set that as a Boolean. And then we need to, our process input function call up here, we need to pass in that compiled value as well. Uh, instead of passing true, where like we did in the run word function, we're gonna pass in false. So now we know if process input is being run from console input, which is right here, or if it's being run from the compiled uh, you know, value that we have, which is being run in run word down here. So that's going to help us now in our dictionary kind of checking. Uh, mainly what we want to do is make a copy of this last else if, this else if compiled words dot contains, um, you know, where we're checking for our input and we want, so we have a copy of that now. And uh, we can say, you know, print exists in dict for both, but for the top one, we're just going to, we're going to get rid of the run word call. And then uh, we're just going to put two ampersands. So it's an and condition and compiled equals true. Actually, yeah, true. Okay. And then for the next one, we want and compiled equals false. So we're just very slightly changing how this whole process input function runs. Uh, if 
whether it is run from the, the console or run uh, with a word and definition from this compiled word string. Uh, now, if it runs from the compiled word string, so, you know, or let's see. Now, if it runs normally, not from the compiled word string, then we want to run the word, run word function. We don't want to run run word if we're already running process input from run word because then we're just going to get an infinite loop. It's just going to keep, you know, it's going to come down and uh, it's going to run run word, the function, and, um, and then it's going to go through and it's going to come back and run process input, which is going to bring it down and it's going to see, okay, let me run run word. It's going to run run word, which runs process input. So it's just going to keep looping. So essentially we're just, we're using this and we're preventing that from happening. And uh, so the process input function works differently based on where it's being run from. So, uh, and then let's just add a little bit, a uh, little bit of error handling here. Uh, if run word, so basically if it runs, you know, if, if we return true, so if run word, that means, that means it got down to this return true statement. Uh, then break else and we want to, well, we'll just print another error, uh, error with error running compiled word. Yeah. Uh, we might get a little bit of redundancy here in our error messages because we're going to have, because if it fails, it's going to give us this error and it's going to give us this. But um, that's fine right now. I think I think that's that's perfectly fine. So let's. Uh, I mean, this is actually. I think this is this is basically. That's all the changes we need to make. Let's let's try running it here. So oops, oops. I'm still in it. From last time. Okay. So all right. So um, let's run it. So xc run swift. And, oh, I have to get rid of. I had these from just to was using to explain it in the last video, I guess. I just need to get those out of there. Compiler does not know what that is. Okay. All right. So it compiles. So that's a good start. Let's uh, let's make a word, Bob, twenty twenty plus. So what this should do is when we run Bob, when we type Bob into our prompt here. It should put 20 on the stack and then put another 20 on the stack and then add the top two values of the stack together, right? Because that's what's in our dictionary. That's what plus does according to our dictionary. It adds, which is our add function, puts those two words together. Um, so let's let's see how it works here. Now this, is, this should be a compiled word since we're using our colon and our semicolon. Moment of truth, let's see, uh, let's look at Check and see if it's in our, there it's in our compiled words list. Uh, let's see if anything's on our stack right now. No, let's add 10 to our stack just to, just for, you know, just to see how things work here. Maybe 32. So now we should have 10 and 30. 10 and 30. Okay. Oh, just search for, that's weird. It's searching, it's finding a, if I run it as a blank, it's finding a space or a blank word there. That's something we'll have to look at definitely when we go through and add some error handling. <clears throat> but if we do Bob, uh, okay, it runs through twice. Okay, I see. So we might have to clean this up, but basically the basic thing is here right now. So I think I think we're good at this point. Um, it finds that it exists in the dictionary and then it puts... 20, 20, and plus, right? And it processes that. And when it adds those two values together, it comes out with 40. So that's good. That's um, run word. Let's see. So it prints. Where is, did it print okay? Well, here it printed okay. It's weird. So it did exists in dict. Let's see what the order is for this. We might have to change these a little bit, like just to tell which is which. Let's try that. Let me try doing this again. Bob 2020 plus Bob. Okay, so it, okay, that makes sense. First time it's gonna have false. 
So it comes down and then it runs the run word function, which um, is going to print our definition, which is 2020 plus, right? We don't, doesn't really need to do that. We can take that out now. Uh, and then it's going to run process input, which would, the input would be 2020 plus that it's processing. And so when it's processing that, it's, uh, it's going to look, if it's an integer, it's going to put it on the stack. So it's going to put that 20 on the stack and then it's going to put that 20 on the stack. And then it's going to add the top two values of the stack. Okay. So it's doing that. So we get 40 after it runs through that. Here's where I'm not sure what it's doing. Let's see. I don't know. We'll have to, I'll, I'll have to troubleshoot that and come back. I don't want to tie up this video for too long. So uh, that'll probably be the next video fixing that. And we also want to fix that issue where if we, um, if we make a word that named a number, an integer, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to allow the user to compile that or allow that to compile. Because if we do this, if we try to find that word, it's going to, it doesn't find it. See, it's, it's in our compiled list. There it is, 70. But it doesn't find it because it's an integer. 70 is an integer, so it automatically um, just puts 70 on the stack. If we look at our stack, we have two 70s there now. So we want to prevent any words from being named in, after integers. So that's what we'll do in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.